outside of Houston, Texas. And it was country, it was, a, it was a nice life. There were five boys and one girl. My sister was the oldest, and then five boys, and I was next to the youngest. So I had it easier than the ones on the older ones, you know, the younger ones have an easier time. Happy childhood. My older brother decided to become a priest, a missioner, and he was a tough guy and a wild guy, and always kind of my hero. When he was around, things happened, and he eventually became a missioner in Guatemala. And uh, so he was always my mentor, and whenever I got a chance, I would visit him in Guatemala and, you know, ride a horseback for eight hours just to get into where he was living. And, uh, I went into the Army, Vietnam area, and I uh, ended up going to Panama instead of Vietnam. And uh, I learned to fly, and that was an exciting thing. That was my big dream, to be able to fly. And then when I got out of the Army, they found out I had a kidney problem and they wouldn't give me a license to fly in the States. And so I was kind of discouraged, and my brother in Guatemala said, come on down to Guatemala. He says, you can get a license here. So I ended up going to Guatemala and becoming a bush pilot. And then uh, when I was there, the people I was working with got some land in Moscow for allspice. And they said, would you like, the first day I was here, I walked into Barclays Bank, and that was, that was my Waterloo. That was where I met Marta, and I think I... You know, I mean, I was just absolutely blown away. When John walked into the bank, I thought he was a nice looking guy. And I thought, another foreigner <laughs> has come in to do something here, invest or whatever. And, um, but I quickly learned after he asked me out on the first date, what a really sweet person he is, was. Always very, very charming, you know, uh, looked out for open doors for you, that type of guy. Somebody that it was easy to fall in love with. Our life up to April 93 had been wonderful, um, fun. We did a lot of things with our kids. We felt, never even thought anything terrible could happen to us. Everything was going really well. Um, and then in April 93, our 20-year-old daughter got into a really horrible accident and when we got the call that night, um, we kind of just knew. Nobody said anything had happened. However, inside we, we felt this was not good. So um, we rushed to the hospital and, and of course my deep fears were confirmed. And, um, and so the, the, the days, the months after that were really really very hard, um, terrible, indescribable. But you have to move on, or you have to move with it. You have to still go on and do things for your other kids. When you lose someone that is so close to you, you know, that's part of you, that's your responsibility and the one that you, you know, you interact with daily, there is such a void in your life and it's a, there's no hope to it uh, except for the fact that then you start thinking of afterlife and, and, and those kind of things so that there is a rejoining that you will be able to communicate with her again in, in some way, you know. And I, I to, to actually live through that, that is the, the major. And it's happening all the time. I was, But it, it certainly shifts your priorities around. Uh, a biggest example of that was a year after my daughter was, died, uh, was killed, uh, my son was in a major crash in Costa Rica. Within an hour, they had him in the hospital, and this was a plane crash. You know, during that time, here with Cisco, with, they gave us, they, they dropped it to 5% chance of him surviving. And they were amazed at our upbeat attitude. But our upbeat attitude was the fact that he was alive. And where it, there's life, there is hope. All of these little sayings come to mean so much, you know. And, but we always hung on to the fact that he was alive, you know. This death business is just so horrible. You just, you have such a hard time, even, even now. Yesterday was 19 years from the death of Carolyn. And uh, we, were, we still, you know, I mean, there's, there's still a hole there. You just learn to cope with it, you know. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a major, major change in the life, yeah. Okay. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. So you don't really look back so much as you look forward all the time. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. 
and there's so much work to be done that, that I think is the driving force. Certainly with me, with Marta, with, with our family, we don't look at it like that, you know, the, this is it. Uh, the time is, our time is finishing at all. We just see so many things that need to be done. I guess it's a progression of life. Uh, and today, being the first day of the rest of my life, we're more looking towards the future rather than, than what has gone on in the past. Even though the past helped shape who you are now, but I see so many things that we need to get done, you know, and so little time to do it. And the honest, honest, honest uh, potential, the positive potential that is out there for us as, as a people, as a country, as a nation, as part of the world. I just think that I'm very, very upbeat about that. I think we have all the potential in the world and that we could become the best country. We could be the shining light, not only of the Caribbean, of the whole world. And I'll never try to hurt you. I want you to.